Africa, welcome. So lovely to see you. Very nice to see you too. Africa, you're you our, first, our first keynote speaker of this conference, so you have the responsibility of the big opening and breaking the ice. So we're looking forward to listening to you. All yours. I will do my best. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, organizers. Okay, well, thank you, Elena. So um, it is really a pleasure to, to be here today. So, um, so indeed, I mean, the last TED conference I participated uh, before pandemic, it was a uh, big thing. So I have very, very, very good memories of that. So hopefully next year we can see each other again. So, um, okay, the subject of my of my talk is about Benchii. Okay, so Benchii is a um, non-profit organization um, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as you said, to to bring uh, the latest AI technologies to the most unserved communities in the world. So let me let me talk a bit about the about the name, okay? So Benshi Ai is um is a Japanese word. It's a Japanese profession that doesn't exist anymore. So um, it's um it's a profession that uh, when the cinemas uh, when the films didn't have a sound, they were only with subtitles. So these uh, the Benshi were the people who was explaining what was happening to the film to those who didn't know how to how to to read. Okay, so this is what we want to want to do. Okay, so we want to provide um, our machine learning platform, our algorithms, bring those technologies to read what the data say in those uh, in this sector. So. And also, I mean, most of the of the leadership and, and members are coming from Japan. We work in there before, so it's a it's a, a piece of our roots. So, so yes, as I said, um, our focus, our vision is to to reduce um, uh, health inequalities with AI technologies. So, um, more concretely, more specifically, is. Um, to provide real-time and just-in-time personalized incentives and recommendations to frontline health workers and patients. So basically provide adaptive interventions. And how we are going to do this? Let me let me put some examples and let me start with, um, um, with some background about uh, the usage of, um, of mobile and health applications in low and middle income countries. So, um, the, um, when we are talking about um, about digitalization, about data, about uh, machine learning in uh, low and middle income country settings, so the first word that appears is mobile. Okay, so mobile is used for everything. So, for instance, just one example. So the um, the payment apps um, were not in invented in US or in China. It was the first one was in Kenya. Okay, so the what is happening um, in low in low middle income countries about this is is big. Okay, so there are many apps differs from uh, the apps that are running in high income countries. So, like for instance, in terms of that they are able to run um, without internet connection, and uh, also they adapt to latency of data. Okay, so um, and then I mean because of this uh, landscape, because of these situations, the number of mobile health apps is is very big. It's even bigger than high income countries. So um, and it's used, of course, to to improve health. So um, it is used to strengthen the health systems and deliver frontline services. It is used to build capacities of frontline health workers and also to address behavioral change. And and this is what Bench is trying to to solve. Okay, so. These apps generate a massive amount of data that there is not used whatsoever to, to improve healthcare outcomes. And we believe that this can be uh, can have a tremendous impact. So let me put some, some context and uh, some examples about the, the projects we are we are currently working. So um, and some of the of the try, I mean of the global health um, challenges we are trying to address or to support with technology. So um, Maternal and newborn neo mortality is the greatest disparity between low and high income countries. Every single day, eight, more than 800 women and 40,000 babies die from causes that are fully preventable um, for reasons related to maternal care. And 99% of this happens in low and middle income countries. Midwives save lives. Okay? We need to empower them. So we need to, to help them. First, they are not enough. And second, their training can be definitely definitely improved. 
So, um, so this is why, I mean, there are many organizations trying to address this and mobile phones, I mean, mobile apps is the, is the communication channel um, and to, to, to solve this. And this is why we're partner, partnering with uh, organizations like Maternity Foundation to improve um, the, the skills, to build the capacity for midwives to, to help on this, on this aspect. So um, another example, Wait a second. Okay. So um, another example is uh, malaria. Okay. So, for instance, in 2018, there were more than 40,000, 400, sorry, thousand deaths. And it's one of the greatest global health challenges. So, with 1.5 million malaria cases since 2000. Okay. Again, there are many apps that uh, they are trying to, to help and to, and to reach areas that they are very difficult to otherwise to, to that health workers go. So be able to, survive, uh, to, to provide surveillance and also to um, address and to support uh, prevention guidelines. So this is, um, this is also, um, there are a lot of data generated with this. So normally, I mean, there are rapid tests to that for malaria, that if we make a picture and support um, the, the, if the test is positive or negative, so we can have much more information about what is the situation of the, if there is any outbreak of malaria. And again, support with recommendations and, and predictions. When is it more likely another outbreak happens? And also how to support uh, the, the healthcare workers in the area and also the, the, the citizens to, to take prevention uh, measures. Another example that we, we work is related with HIV. Okay, so HIV is all behavioral, okay, or most of it is behavioral. So for starting for the prevention guidelines, also to adherence to the treatment, so antiretrovirals, once you get a, a positive, and also how to avoid if you get a positive to, to transmit the disease to other people. So again, so the, the rapid test, there are apps that uh, make a picture and also connect with the behavioral um, analysis and behavioral interventions to try to improve the situation, to try to improve that the, that the patients pick up the test when the, once they do, and um, to help definitely with all these um, to the healthcare systems in the in those areas. Sorry. Another one that we are currently working is with supporting pharmacists. Pharmacies are crucial. So pharmacies are the first point of contact and sometimes the only contact with the healthcare system with of many people in the world. So supporting them with um, with information about which medicines are available, which medicines you should start um, ordering, because are going to it's going to take time until the supply um, arrives. Okay, um, support uh, pharmacies to provide the, the right um, guidance to the to the patients, and also to avoid the rational use of medicine is something that um, we are also working again through apps that uh, connect um, pharmacies that support and help with, um, with the supply of uh, crucial medicaments and medical um, devices. So for instance, WHO um, prepares a list of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the drugs that they're very important that every pharmacy in the world or drugstore has so to assure that the essential medicaments are always um, are always available for them in every area of the world is, uh, is a must. And also, we, we have partnered with the World Diabetes Foundation to support frontline health workers in low-income countries to, um, to support, to diagnose, and to take um, early treatment uh, with diabetes. Three out of four people with diabetes are now living in lower middle-income countries. So it's also very important that, uh, that this primary care is aware and, and support them to with the right uh, information, with the right recommendation, with the right intervention to, um, to, to help to, with the diagnosis of this disease. And for this purpose, we have, uh, we have built a data-centric and behavioral machine learning platform for low and middle income countries. So let me be more specific. 
So um, why we say data centric? Okay, so of course we have realized that uh, one of the one of the most important points, and this is uh, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say anything new, is the quality of the data. We are talking about digital data, so the the, the quality can be can be the best. Okay, so this is why we have developed an SDK that uh, help our partners to to track and to label the data properly for machine learning purposes. Okay, so automatically they integrate this SDK in the code of the app. So automatically it's going to track, as, as I said, the label um, with machine learning purposes. And then the second step is that this information is going to fit the data governance, the data pipeline governance, model governance that is available in our machine learning platform. So automatically, I mean, they will fit uh, as a features the different machine learning models that are in production, behavioral machine learning models, and also advanced, exper advanced experimentation like reinforcement learning. So all these with one goal, with the goal of empower frontline headquarters and to provide them with um, real time and just in time adaptive interventions. So, as we saw before, and, uh, and, and to close the loop, okay, so what uh, the kind of recommendations, the kind of predictions and interventions that we provide to the frontline headquarters are different goals. So the first one, for instance, building the midwife's capacities. So a well-trained midwife is able to, to save two thirds of the current debt. So supporting the primary care LA diagnosis, like with what we do with World Diabetes Foundation, or prescribe the right medication at the right time. And again, be able to support with um, uh, other diseases, epidemiological diseases, like um, tuberculosis, uh, malaria, or HIV. This is just um, um, some uh, some screenshots of uh, of our platform. So what we want to show you, and, and also have one uh, video demo included in the presentation, is that um, I mean our vision is like, of course, there's a strong backend with the SDK and all the production models and so on. But we have an intuitive and actionable front end that every partner has access to their data. They can download if they want to do any tailored uh, further analysis. Um, they have full transparency about the models that are in production, the accuracy, the features that are introduced, all, all the experiments that they are running and the, and, the, and the impact they are having on the outcome of interest. So trust, I mean, being transparent is, is essential for us being so, so they can have full access. But the idea and why we're building this is that what we want is that every single organization in low and middle income countries have access to this battery of technology both from modeling, recommendation, experimentation. So they can start, I mean, of course we help them, but also um, this uh, um, allow us to scale, allow us to, um, that every organization with, uh, I mean, maybe one or two data analysts, they can have access to those technologies that before um, they never had access. No, 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 no. Sorry. This is another another analytics because we also include analytics because uh, what we observe is, is also important even if it's not the core of our platform is that analyzing the past showing the results and the campaigns the effectiveness of the campaigns they performed before is also very interesting and, and for them so this is also included okay here i have the the video just in order to have a, a look about what uh, we have built. We are going to release a new version this month. So, well, you just log in and well, you have access to the summary of the um, uh, results, analytics of uh, every partner has uh, access to it, how many experiments has run, also the data ingestion, how is the, yeah, the, the data that is coming, the models that are in production. So as I mentioned before, with a uh, um, very strong model governance. So every single change in the, I mean, if there is a new training set for running, every parameter or new feature that is included is also visualized. Also the accuracy of the models. Um, here we see like yes, uh, users at the individual level. Um, and also the experimentation engine, where we have um, like clinical trials, uh, A-B testing. We have also micro-randomized trials and reinforcement learning in production. And also you can have access to the analysis of the impact 
of um, the different interventions or nudges that uh, that uh, every organization have sent, and also with the effect they have at the individual level. So person personalization is a key um, for us. And I think that's all. Okay. So. Um, So which which are the data? I mean, which data we are we are working with? Okay, which are the what is the information that uh, that we track with our SDK and also we include as a external information? No, what is included in our in our platform? So the first and main source of information, of course, as I mentioned before, are the logs from the apps. Okay, so we have. Um, a lot of frontline health users, from frontline health workers, sorry, and also uh, sometimes also patients that introduce information, and also healthcare workers introduce patient information embedded into their apps. So all these logs, all these records, all this information is what is tracked. Okay, so this is the main source of um, information in terms of patient um, health profiles that are introduced by the healthcare workers. Uh, we also um, analyze the, um, the trajectories of uh, health and disease, and also how the actions of different health workers, uh, or, or even the same health workers, can have to different patients. So it's not the same. So we personalize that at the two levels, we can say. And also contextual information. What I refer with this, we need to, to, to put context to the recommendations we give. So we also uh, partner with public health and, and governments, governmental institutions to have access to demographic, demographic information, environmental information, um, cultural religion, very related as well with nutrition that can derive to different kinds of uh, diseases as well, or can trigger some of them. Um, climate, if it's rainy or, um, or dry season, it's also fundamental if we want to recommend, for instance, that a person is, uh, is sent to, to a clinic, and also epi epidemiological status, okay? If there is an outbreak of COVID, of uh, malaria, it's, uh, it's fundamental that uh, all this information is included, as obviously the, the, the recommendations will, will change. So, um, as, a, as, a, as I mentioned, okay, so um, our goal is to provide useful and actionable information to first understand past behavior, okay, understand how providing to our partners with this information about what happened in the past, what decisions were, were right and, and, and which ones were not so successful and also predict future outcomes. So who is more likely that uh, get a certification in the online learning app? Who is more likely that uh, stop using the app and the connection is going to be broken? Who is more likely that uh, has complication in the, in the current disease? So you need to increase the, um, the, the, the amount of visits, the frequency of the visits. And all this information is to take action and match behavior. So, so once we know, for instance, that it's, um, it's is likely that, uh, I mean, a midwife is predicted that it's not going to get a certification, but it's going to be close to get it. So how we can motivate her to, to be able to, to achieve the goal. So this is the, the, the core of our work. And as I mentioned before as well, I mean, the personalization is, is fundamental for us. So we, we of course uh, personalize at the level of user, Okay, so every behavior that uh, this person does and, and, and all how the contextual information affects to, to this particular user and then moving from the user behavior to collective behavior. So we, it's much easier to, to be able to, to, to understand the different profiles. Also, when we are talking about collective behavior. And also when um, something that we do as well is that uh, even if we focus on digital information, we also perform um, users interviews on, on site. Okay, so it's, it is important as well that um, that uh, we are able to determine different uh, profiles. So at the end, I mean, we we want to check if this uh, this analysis is correct with uh, personalized interviews and also surveys. Um, also, personalized at the passion level, as I mentioned before, the actions that uh, that the user does um, can have a strong impact different impact on different patients and also personalized at the at the level of pharmacy clinic of point of care 
Okay, so it's not the same. A pharmacy of a clinic that is in a rural area, in a remote area, that is if, if, even if it's uh, low income settings in a, in a city. So the kind of recommendations we also perform in terms of supply chain or availability of drugs, or also the, 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 the patients that go to that, to that clinic or pharmacy are completely different. So the recommendations also adapt to, to this level of personalization. Let me explain a bit uh, how the, the, the work um, cycle okay, of, the, um, of our platform works. The first point is the, is the SDK. So as I mentioned, so the SDK is integrated into the code of uh, our partners app. Okay, so this allowed two communication. The first one is like a real time sync of the, of the logs and also way back. Okay, so not only like the data is coming, the, the data is going. So we are also able to send interventions, nudges, nudges and, and track the, the impact of that. So, okay, so with SDK, we receive um, all the information about uh, what, is, what is the, the actions and how is the interaction of the user with the app. The second one is that automatically is going to be labeled and the data pipeline differentiating between metrics, KPIs, traits, and features, okay? Metrics is just the individual time series behavior, KPIs aggregated, traits are different characteristics of different behaviors of users, and the features is what is going to be included as, um, as a feature of the machine learning models. And then this information that is organized and classified in a very rigorous manner is going to fit the, the, the model management. Okay, and here is where we have a, we have a, a product that uh, organize and keep track of every single change that uh, mold, I mean that we do in the model that they are in that we put in production. If we are running the model with a longer historical uh, data, this is also being um, uh, controlled. Okay, or if it's, we, we are changing a parameter, of course, if we change the algorithm, both from algorithm side and from data side, this is going to be. Uh, tracked into the model management product. And we focus on three main kind of uh, models, three blocks, we can say. The first one is the user behavioral predictions. This means that we are going to, we are going to predict uh, at individual level, who is more likely that get a, a certification or not? Who is more likely that they stop using the app? Who is more likely that is going to have a complication with the, with the pregnancy or with the, the, the current disease? So these are the kind of um, user behavioral predictions that, uh, that we perform for every single user. And then, for instance, once we know um, that, for instance, uh, uh, a person is going to stop using the app or a person is going to, to ask for a particular um, drug in the e-commerce app, so we can recommend what additionally um, uh, we can, I mean, can be content, can be products. We, we, can, we can provide um, to, the, to the user to, to take a better, to improve our healthcare outcome. So in the case, for instance, uh, what, is the, what is the right information we need to send them? I mean, in order that uh, does a better diagnosis, for instance. And then forecasting, okay? Forecasting is also a very important piece. First, to, to forecast the contextual information. The contextual information sometimes is not updated. Okay, so it's difficult to keep track of all this demographic environmental um, information. So we also uh, perform projections and forecasts to, to have more realistic information for the contextual data. And also in terms of forecasting, of course, we include um, trajectories of health and disease, but also the supply chain. Supply chain is important that with the limited resources that they have, so it's very important that uh, they don't spend too much time making plans of purchases and so on in a very dark um, uh, and, and hidden uh, supply chain system that sometimes is very difficult for them what is going to be available and what is not. So um, helping in optimizing the, the supply chain, helping in, in, uh, in keep things easy and, and send reminders about certain materials um, or medicaments that needs to be purchased in advance is also very important. So with all this information, okay, and, and again, I mean, our goal is to, to nudge behavior, to take action, it's where we go to the nudges um, service. In the nudges service, we choose to whom we want to perform an action and the action itself, which kind of, um, of, uh, 
of recommendation, if it's machine learning based or just message, if it's a post notification, we want to perform to, to the different people. For instance, if we imagine that we want to send some reminders of online health workers um, that work in, uh, in Nigeria, okay, but you want to focus in the Lagos area only, okay, so, so for instance, this is a place where you can choose even a subset of the results um, that they are coming from the, from the, from the machine learning models. So, um, and then the, um, the, the next step is the experimentation engine, okay, XP engine. Experimentation, experimentation, experimentation. So this is, this is extremely important. So it's the, experimentation is the, only, is the only way to, to, to analyze um, casualty and um, is, uh, is fundamental to, to understand what is the impact of our actions are having to the to the different end users. Okay, so this is why in this um, in this product we provide um, classical techniques, but also micro randomized trials and reinforcement learning in a in a basic and more advanced ways um, to help to give recommendations on the fly. Um, first experimentation. Then when we are sure, we can uh, do full adoption. Um, and everything, both the experiment, experiments and full adoptions are done through the SDK. Sorry. We also do research in uh, in house, okay, and uh, and these are the main pieces that the main the main uh, research areas that we focus. Causal inference is uh, of course one of them, as I mentioned before. Behavioral prediction, like uh, working with the with the most advanced um, uh, behavioral prediction uh, algorithms, working with uh, state of the art, and just published um, uh, algorithms trying to transform these theoretical approaches and put them in production, but also doing variations of the main algorithms to, to be able to, to adapt to, 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 to our needs, to our challenges. Forecasting also, as I mentioned, reinforcement learning, of course, and also synthetic data generation. So it's very important that we test everything carefully before putting in production with, with our partners. So this is why we try to simulate synthetic um, uh, with synthetic data actual user's behavior. Um, we have, I mean, we, we only have been alive for one year, okay, so that we are happy that we have two, three, three main publications, um, uh, I mean, I said, I mean, three, three papers after the full publication, sorry. So um, the first one was in KDD, and uh, we just got uh, two papers after the for NeurIPS in the, in the words of uh, the first one is in the Andrew NG of data centric AI, and the second one is the public health uh, worship in NeurIPS. And uh, we were also very happy that, uh, that the one that we, um, that we sent to KDD, I mean, was awarded with the base paper award in the healthcare workshop. And uh, we are doing in-house research, but we also have key collaborations with um, with uh, with the best teams in the world in terms of uh, what concern us. So we work with um, Harvard University with a statistical reinforcement learning lab, but there is a specific lab that focuses on on applying reinforcement learning for M health applications. Um, we work as well with the University of California, Santa Cruz, with, um, with game design elements for healthcare. Okay, so we are coming from the, from the video game industry, and uh, we also feel that uh, we also know that um, video games, in terms of natural behavior, in terms of motivating, they are unique. So also get, bringing those, um, those elements to the, to the healthcare world can be, can be extremely impactful. And the last one is the University of Tokyo that it was just recently signed agreement. So and the focus of this is, um, is collaborate with fundamental research on reinforcement learning. So at the end, what we are doing is adapting algorithms that they are working extremely well in, um, in high income countries. But, uh, but what we want is that uh, also develop our own algorithms that work specifically for our settings, for low and middle income countries. So that is what we are doing with, um, with, um, with the lab of uh, machine learning of the University of Tokyo. This is one of the biggest, if not, I mean, I think the biggest in, in Japan in terms of machine learning research. And uh, before continuing, I want to just stop one second and, um, and talk about the team, okay? Because, because we are working 
restless and uh, and they deserve definitely acknowledge um for for the work that we are doing so it's a uh, i mean part of the leadership uh, we're working together with some of them since uh, 2000 2000 15 um, and back in Japan and they moved we moved together here to Spain and um, well I mean I'm not going to say anything new that uh, all of you know that uh, for data science teams diversity is fundamental and um, for us that we work in in in, in low income country settings is 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 definitely a must okay we won't succeed if if, uh, if we don't have a truly diverse team. So we have people from China, from Singapore, from uh, Iran, from Pakistan, from Haiti, from Nigeria, from um, Korea, and, and along, et cetera. And we are really working very hard on this, and, and this is not trivial, okay? So because it requires a lot of effort from immigration's point of view, and, but definitely uh, the results are better and, uh, and it's worth it, okay? So, I want to transmit this also for everyone. And um, also, okay, so now um, I move to the piece of um, the collaboration we have, just a case study with the Maternity Foundation. Maternity Foundation is a nonprofit organization that is the, the headquarters in Denmark, but the focus, um, the work is uh, mainly focused on Africa and also India. Uh, this is one of the samples that I'm, I'm showing here. So the focus of, of uh, Maternity Foundation is to provide with digital tools and with apps that increase the capacities of um, um, of midwives. Okay, so to empower them. So um, so basically, it's an online learning tool. Okay, so that uh, they try to cover um, the I mean the most important skills that they need to to reinforce or to 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 be fully updated. So um, so for instance, in the first figure we see the number of uh, safe delivery app is the is the app that uh, has been developed by Maternity Foundation. So safe delivery app users in India. Okay, so here we see a distribution, and then for instance we see like the district level um, poverty. In a different in a different uh, dimension so we can also see that the number of users and the number of um, of i mean and the and the, um, and the level of poverty in india also correlate and also when we have a look not only for the users that have downloaded the app but also when we we see the level of engagement that uh, those users have with the um, with the safe delivery app it also correlates with the areas that are poorer in 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 india so some some of the some of the analysis, okay, just to put a couple of examples of the of the work that we are doing with Maternity Foundation. So one of the goals that um, that we work together is to increase certification, okay, to to get a, a level of knowledge and exam through a series of personalized and contextually tailored interventions, okay. So so the, the results I'm showing on the right are predictions on learning progress among safe delivery app users in Ethiopia, okay? So, um, so here we see different professions, okay? Not only um, our midwives, but other skilled birth attendants that, uh, that use the app. And <clears throat> here we can see, so that uh, is, um, uh, there is a, a, a change of behavior uh, below and above the level five of the app, okay? So and um, the ones that, uh, I mean, once you pass the level five, it's much more likely that you are closer to get the certification. So we can see the different distributions of the different, uh, of the different uh, um, professions. And we can see that the students, they are not so, um, I mean, so keen to continue using it, but what is the big need is uh, if with midwives. But for instance, if we go to the next slide, so um, also we can see the different distributions of progression and at the end getting the certification. So again, in the level five, we see that um, they are the ones who are less likely to progress into the, into the learning app. And, uh, and, and this at the end, this information will tell us is different levels of, of course, personal life interventions we need to perform to, to, in order that they continue using the app and continue learning, okay? And, um, and the, with having the, the right level of engagement, that this is the goal. It's not like uh, with other apps that the more they use it, the better, okay? No, the, it's something that supports the learning curve of the, of the skilled birth attendants. So, um, 
So for instance, the more you use the, uh, in, in case if, if, uh, if you spend at least three hours using the app, you, it's predicted that you go below the, the level five. So be able to provide with personalized content, not only to pass the certification for those that, get, that they are going to be closed and, uh, and, and it's very likely that with some uh, information that they get it, but also to be able to, to send information that engagement, content modules that they, that, uh, that they enjoy in order that they can also learn the ones that uh, they enjoy less, okay? So be able to, to recommend um, personalized for every person for every circumstance. And if, if uh, and it can be much more aggressive, if it's very likely that the person stop using the app, that if, for instance, is in an area that is more likely than naturally happens or is very close to the habit. And, and also to finish, okay, so let the last piece that, uh, that I wanted to talk is about reinforcement learning, okay, because reinforcement learning is a, a fundamental piece in, in our platform and, uh, and something that they, we really want to bring uh, the state of the art um, to, to low and middle income countries. So reinforcement learning consists on an agent that learns through interaction with the environment, what is the best action to maximize the reward for a given state. Okay, so in our case, um, the agent is going to be a uh, Benji platform where the algorithm is in production. The action that we perform is intervention, okay, with a specific um, healthcare goal. So the state, sorry, I forgot. So the state can be any information of uh, any environment representation can be any, any information about the user behavior or the, the um, information about where this person lives, demographic status, et cetera. And um, the, um, the, uh, the environment is also the, the behavior of, uh, of the user, the passion, the contest, and the reward is um, user behavior and at the end, passion outcomes, okay? So depending on, if imagine if, uh, if the goal is that, uh, that a healthcare worker revise some information before doing diagnosis or add a, a include some additional tests to the patient, okay? So if at the end this person did it, this would be a reward. If they not, it's not, okay? It was not successful, that, that intervention. Okay, in this, uh, in this slide, I included um, a slot machine picture, okay? Because I, I wanted to introduce the multi arm bandits. So, um, Slot machines are uh, sometimes referred as, uh, I mean, I'm not, I, I know most of you know, as one R bandit. Okay. So, why? Because the, the old ones had this, um, this uh, arm, okay, that you can pull to start playing. And also, bandits, and this is the, where this name is coming, is because they typically rip your money. Okay. So, um, and the um, Reinforcement learning can, can be represented. I mean, the simplest problem, okay, is, uh, is called uh, multi R bandits, okay? Because it's, uh, it's equivalent to having a series of slot machines and uh, you can decide at each time which arm you should pull to try and maximize your reward or at least to, 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 to minimize the losses. So um, this is because I wanted to talk at the, about uh, multi-arm bandits. So um, this is the simplest version of the reinforcement learning problem where the actions are picked See, by Africa, the agent. Africa, sorry, so, sorry, uh, sorry for interrupting Africa, but we ran out of time. Uh, I know okay. you, you started a bit later, so we have to start finishing if you, if you may, if you can. That'd be so okay. kind. Thank you. I can. <laughs> I can. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, uh, let me just uh, summarize quickly, okay? So, um, well, we use, uh, starting from multi r bandits, we move to contextual bandits when information is online. So we have also information about the state and uh, we use uh, reinforcement learning, okay? For first personalized intervention. So with other experiment uh, type of advanced experimentation is not possible to take it into account online information again, and that the systems um, um, adapt to learn uh, even if the best action changes. And, um, and also just put co some context about the different kind of experimentations that we also have in production to So like A-B testing, randomized um, control trials, MRTs where everyone can be in A and B um, for different, uh, in different days, okay? To study, I mean, how the, how the intervention can, um, can uh, how intervention can change uh, depending on the hour that they, they sent. 
and moving to contextual bandits. Okay, so basically, multi bandits are a smart version of randomized controlled trials or MRTs, and contextual bandits is even a smarter version of reinforcement of uh, um, randomized controlled trials or, or MRTs. Okay, and uh, we are working, uh, of course, with synthetic data research, and also the direction we are going is towards collaborative interactive recommenders, where not only ba uh, based on uh, actions, also focus on sequence of actions. Um, just as a summary, so uh, our goal is to empower with information based on data from like health workers in all middle income countries, Performance learning is extremely powerful and um, putting together information about analyzing past behavior, predicting future behavior. Africa, Africa, I suggest, sorry for interrupting yes. again. I suggest our, our viewers take a picture of this summary so they will remember. You don't have, <laughs> you have been stalking and you're thirsty. Uh, take a picture. <laughs> Because we have a few questions, uh, I, I, we don't have time, Africa. To, uh, I know you started a bit late, and I apologize oh, for that. We have no a, bit, a, a few questions, but just a quick one before we say goodbye to you. First of all, thank you so much. Congratulations on the amazing job you've done in so little time. And uh, wh one of the questions I'm asking is just the one that is a yes or no answer. Uh, whether uh, you are working on any, uh, you mentioned some of the global health challenges, uh, HIV, malaria, diabetes, uh, of obviously birth uh, 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 rate, uh, mortality at birth. What about COVID-19? Are you working or will you be working on any of in, in this? Yes or no? And a uh, very quick tweet answer. <laughs> yes, we will be working as well. Excellent. So we have to stay tuned then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Africa, I have to thank you so much for this fascinating talk, amazing job. Congratulations, arigato gozaimasu, and we'll see you very soon. Africa Beriañez, all our thank love. Thank you very much.